In today's q and I'm gonna answer your questions on shoe care. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Our first question today is from Chris Blair, and it reads, how do I get brown shoe polish off the edge of a leather sole on a boot such as the Red Wing Iron Ranger when the actual natural color is needed as like when new? Many thanks. Chris, great question. Uh, and this is a common problem whenever you take your shoes to be shined uh, on a common shine stand. Oftentimes they'll take edge dressing and indiscriminately dress a natural edge, a dark brown, thereby really ruining that natural soft color you get with the naturally finished edge. Don't worry, your shoes aren't finished, uh, but it will take a little bit of work to return those edges back to normal. Now, depending on what type of dye was used, uh, you could try to use some of the Saphir Reno Mat to pull that off, but if it was any alcohol-based leather dye uh, or anything that's really penetrating and soaking into that leather outsole, then what you're gonna have to do is actually take some sandpaper and sand the edge until the natural color returns. Now don't worry, once the edge is sanded, you can reapply an edge dressing to give it a nice finish. Now on a naturally finished edge, uh, really what I would recommend is either using a light brown polish or even a neutral polish to help uh, wax that edge and bring it up to a shine, but otherwise uh, easily resolved. Our second question is from Jal Gamesh and it reads, Hi Kirby, great video. Uh, this was on our how to add a patina to your leather dress shoe videos. A uh, quick question, is it possible to remove patina using the Saphir Reno Mat and then apply a normal shoe polish like Saphir again? Will this work? Great question. Uh, and in order to answer this, it really depends on what you mean by patina. Now, oftentimes a patina is just simply applied using various colors of say like a cream shoe polish. Now this isn't an, a permanent patina, uh, is uh, applied after the factory finish and is something that you can do from home. Now what's nice about patining or antiquing your shoes just using simple shoe polishes uh, is that you can remove that using something like the Saphir Reno Mat, which will pull anything that's been placed on top of that leather off. Now if you're speaking of a more permanent patina, like something that was either done with alcohol-based leather dyes or would have been done at the factory, you're gonna need something much stronger in order to strip that off. And for this, Saphir has a product called the Decapent. You could also use an acetone to pull that off. Now that is much more caustic and what you're doing is really stripping that finish off of the shoe. Uh, after doing that, uh, it's really not sufficient to just reshine the shoes using a shoe polish because the pigments aren't permanent enough to really even out that finish. So if you were to strip your shoes using something as strong as this, uh, really what you would need to do is re-dye them using an alcohol-based leather dye uh, like the Tincture Frances that Saphir offers. We do have an entire video series that we're working on on how to dye leather dress shoes. Our third question today is from Enrique Lopez and it reads, is the Dubbin Grazé safe for use in shell cordovan shoes? Another good question. So the Dub and Grazé is an animal-based uh, shoe polish that really is a very deep and powerful conditioner. Now traditionally, a dubbin would be used for hiking boots, anything that really needed intense waterproofing. The greasy kind of oily texture of this uh, would help uh, condition and waterproof that leather. We recommend using this in something like our presidential shoe shine uh, because it provides really deep and lasting conditioning that's especially useful across the vamp area and helping prevent that from cracking. Now that said, it isn't something necessarily that I would use uh, on cordovan. And part of the reason is because a cordovan after it's tanned is stuffed with other oils uh, that aren't vegetable based, uh, like a neat foot oil and such. And for that reason, Saphir has actually developed a, a terrific line of cordovan-based cream shoe polishes uh, that are designed specifically for cordovan. They don't contain any solvents or other turpentines uh, that would penetrate that leather and cause the pores to expand, which is a very important and unique characteristic of cordovan leather. Uh, and it uses Nice foot oil as its conditioning basis. So it's gonna help nourish and replenish those oils that are so uh, innate and natural to cordovan. So if you're looking to condition your cordovan shoes, really the best thing that you can use is something like the cordovan shoe polish or a Neats foot oil. Our fourth question today is from Klus P, and it reads, can I use Saphir shoe cream instead of Renovateur? 
I've read these two products instructions and they both have nourishing ingredients uh, and both soften and condition the shoe. Only thing I found that they vary in is the pigmentation uh, because shoe cream has mild pigments uh, in order to renovate the shoe's color. Great question and great observation. The short answer is absolutely yes. What you get through a good shoe cream like the Pomodier Cream Polish is that conditioning, uh, but in addition to that, the pigment, the pigments that are gonna help renourish and even out the finish of a pair of shoes. I recommend using a cream polish for the primary care of all shoes. Now the only thing that's different with the Renovateur is the addition of that mink oil uh, really helps penetrate and provide that deep and lasting conditioning. And I like to call this liquid gold because shoes really eat this up and it can really take a tired and old uh, worn out piece of leather and revitalize it. Now that said, the Saphir Pomodier Cream Polish is an excellent conditioner and certainly will help nourish the leather. So if you had to choose between one or the other, I certainly would recommend going with the pigmented cream shoe polish over just using the Saphir Renovator alone. Our last question is from Teal Gonzalez and it reads, after having completed the entire cycle of cleaning and polishing the shoe, how should I keep it in uh, good condition? I suppose that after the first uses it will be enough with good brushing, but after a while that will not be enough to maintain the luster of the shoe. Uh, and then should I start the, the complete cycle of nutrition, cream and wax, just cream and wax, just wax, uh, in these cases, is it necessary to use a cleaner uh, product, less aggressive than the Reno mat to remove old layers? Or perhaps, could I start the process without using any of the previous cleaner? Best regards from Madrid, Spain. Uh, so Mr. Gonzalez, that is, um, you know, it's a great question, uh, and it really gets down to some of just uh, the nuance and uh, I think some of the freestyle, if you will, of good shoe care. I mean, of course, uh, in the beginning, uh, you know, just simply brushing your shoe with a nice horsehair brush uh, or even something like our goat hair brush uh, is enough to maintain the shine, uh, especially because of the high quality waxes that we use in our polish are persistent and long lasting. So oftentimes just simply brushing them will help renew them to a nice shine. I like using uh, a soft bristle brush like our goat hair brush uh, on uh, the mirror shine because with a little bit of buffing, you generate a little bit of heat. Uh, it can really help renew that finish. At the end of the day, I always brush my shoes uh, either with a horsehair brush or a pig bristle brush. Again, just to help kind of clean them off and to renew those waxes. But you're totally right. At a certain point, the brushing alone isn't going to be enough to keep your shoes looking great. Now, here I would say that how you approach it really depends on how bad the shoes are and what you're looking to achieve. Oftentimes, you just need to renew or um, you know, replenish uh, the mirror shine on the toe cap. So if that were the case, uh, maybe I would just take my high shine chamois, uh, a little bit of uh, wax polish, uh, and just focus on that area of the shoe and it would be enough to renew that. Now, if you were to put cream on top of that high shine, those softer waxes would really pull that shine down. So I wouldn't do that until I was ready to totally start that process over again. Now for the rest of the shoe, again, it just depends on how much time you have and what you're looking to achieve. Sometimes in the morning, I'll pull out a pair of shoes and I'll look at them uh, and it'll be very clear to me that they need something before I go out in the morning. And oftentimes, if that's the case, I'll just throw on a really quick single application of a cream polish, give it a few minutes to dry, perhaps while I'm taking a shower, and then buff that off whenever I come back into my closet. Just one coat of a great cream polish uh, is enough to very quickly renew a finish and bring it up and shine. So that's how I would approach, you know, just the really quick renewal and maintenance of a shine. Now you reach a certain point where even that's not enough and you kind of need to pull that off and really clean the shoe. So I would recommend not even using a product like the Saphir Reno Mat because again, this is really strong and it's something that I really would just recommend using two or three times a year maximum. So if you weren't gonna use the Reno Mat, you could use something like the leather cleaning soap but to be totally honest, just simply starting over with a good cream polish and going through that process of the cream polish, buffing it off, maybe another application of the cream polish, buffing it off, adding some wax, and then working on a mirror shine uh, is totally sufficient to clean and completely renew a pair of shoes. In short, my answer is, if your shoes look like they need to be shined, shine them. Uh, and don't be afraid or hesitant uh, to try less versus more. You don't have to go through the entire presidential shoe shine routine every single time you go to shine your shoes. 
really the secret to maintaining and keeping a great pair of shoes looking, uh, looking great uh, are those small kind of maintenance touch points that don't take much time, that you're able to do at the beginning of the morning, uh, and that really carry a shoe forward uh, as you're wearing them. So I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. Of course, if you have any questions we can answer, remember to always ask them in the comments section below our videos. I try to get back to as many of those questions as possible. In today's video, I'm wearing one of my bespoke Chris Despis uh, odd jackets. It's a beautiful forest green uh, with a slight donegal in it. It's a really soft weave, 100% cashmere, uh, and really is great for a nice February day like today. I'm wearing, of course, one of our beautiful Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade Ancient Matter ties. And I love these ties because they have an incredible hand and really tie a beautiful knot very easily. I'm wearing a bespoke Charvet shirt, departing a little bit from my standard white. I'm wearing a blue stripe, uh, a pair of uh, bespoke trousers from Chris Despis also. Uh, this is in a sable cash fabric, uh, which is a cashmere with a little bit of sable in it. Incredibly soft and warm. I'm wearing a pair of bespoke George Cleverly Baron Deridi casual shoes. Uh, one of my favorite pair of shoes, the Baron Deridi is uh, just exceptionally elegant uh, and classy, and it's made out of a black pigskin. So it's a very conservative shoe, but the small pores in the pigskin give it a great visual texture that make these shoes subtly stand out from anything else that someone might be wearing. 